Hi, I'm Abby, and welcome to KBI's Play Your Song Academy. Today we'll be talking about how to take care of the oboe. What we'll be learning is the parts of the oboe, what not to do to your instrument, how to put your oboe together, all about reeds, posture, cleaning your oboe out when you finish playing, how to keep your oboe safe, and all the really awesome accessories that you can get with your oboe. Today, we have a special guest. Her name is Blair. She is our KBI oboe instructor, and she has a Bachelor of Music in Music Education from James Madison University. Hi, my name is Blair Harlow, and we're gonna talk about the oboe today. First, we're gonna talk about the different parts because they're important. So we have our top joint or our upper joint. There's a picture on the side the, the, of this all put together. So here we have our top or upper joint. We have our middle joint or our lower joint, depending on what it's called. And then our last piece is the bell. Okay. Um, let's talk about some things that you can find on all three of these parts. Um, each of these parts has keys. You push down the keys and you get different sounds that come out, which is really cool. Um, parts of those keys, if you look underneath, like this one right here, you can kind of see that there's a pad under there. And that's how this um, it closes the key off so that sound, different sounds come out, right? All right, so another part about this is that this part right here, you can tell that this is cork and it's a little bit smaller around than the rest of this. This is so that you can take the next part, so I have a top joint and a middle joint, and you can put them together so that they go together. Woo, right? Awesome. Last part that we haven't talked about yet is our reed. This is what it looks like. We'll talk way more about them later, but your reed has a cork on it and it goes in the top joint like so. Now that we know the different parts of the oboe, let's talk about what not to do. Okay, things to never, ever, ever do. First one, cork grease is the only thing you should put on your corks, whether it's the ones that hold your instrument together or the one on your reed that goes in here. Cork grease is the only thing you should put on it. Don't put anything else. Also, cork grease kind of looks like chapstick. Don't use it as that, it's gross. All right. Next, we're going to talk about our screws. So as you can see, there are lots and lots and lots of little different screws on here. You should never ever touch them. No, nope. because if you touch, if you tighten or loosen them, then things might not work right. And then you'll have to take it to KBI or your local music store to get it fixed. And you'll be sad because you can't play the oboe. Hmm. I know, right? Okay. Um, Let's talk about using force and grabbing keys. Now you notice that I have been holding it over keys, but I'm holding it very loosely. I'm not like death gripping. If I death grip on the keys, then I bend them and then I have to get it fixed and then I'm sad, okay? Um, one last thing to note here, never lay it like this. I'll tell you why later, so stay tuned for that. Okay, our last part of never ever things to do. Never ever get water, get it wet. No, this is a water-free zone, okay? The only part of the oboe that we've talked about so far that you can get wet is the reed, okay? We'll talk more about that later. This is the only part that can get wet. None of this, water-free zone, okay? Alrighty. Now that I've scared you, <laughs> let's talk about how things, how to put this together and things that we should do. All right, now it's time to put the oboe together. So this is a French style case. Uh, sometimes we have issues getting, people have issues getting into them. So you notice that there's these like little buttons. Um, you're gonna pull them apart, pull them out this way. Um, and then if you don't hear the clasp open, you might have to pull up, but let's see if it opens. Ha! So you heard that click, so now it's open. If that doesn't happen, you'll pull out and then kind of lift the top up at the same time. You'll get used to it. And now they're pretty and voila. Look, look at the what wasn't it pretty? Okay, uh, so we are going to put this together. I normally put the top joint into the middle joint and then the bell on. 
it does not matter in which order you put them together, but there are a few things that we need to make sure that you do. All right, so if I take my top joint out, notice that this is black. You're like, wait, shouldn't there be cork there? Mm -hmm. So this is just a little tenon cork cap. So we're gonna take that out. We're gonna put it in the case. Um, you can leave the other pieces of the oboe in the case when you're putting them together. Uh, just so this isn't in my way, I'm gonna take out the other pieces and put them on the table so I can get this out of my way. All right, okay. So we're gonna start by putting some cork grease on our corks. If it's new, it probably needs some cork grease. Okay, um, you won't have to do this every time, but when you first get it, you probably need to do it quite often. So cork grease, you're gonna uncap it. If I know which direction it opens. Um, you're not gonna need a whole lot. I usually just put like a little glob on. Um, so I put a little glob like right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub it in. So I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna rub it in so that I get all around the cork. Um, and you'll get to a point where you'll feel, oh, that's grease or, oh, that needs some more. Um, so you'll get to feel that difference. Okay, so now I have cork grease on my fingers. What am I going to do? You probably want to use some sort of a rag or a paper towel. Probably not on your pants because then your mom will get mad at you. Don't do that. Um, because it'll leave a grease stain. Not good. All right, so. Some things to note when putting the two joints together, it is a twisting motion. You'll notice my hands go like this. Never shoving. No, no, no. Don't do that. Okay. So twisting motion. Um, there are also bridge keys. So you notice this right here and this right here, they stick up. They're going to go under the ones on the top joint right here and right here. So you want to make sure they're going to end up like this, okay? You want to make sure that they don't hit each other. They shouldn't hit each other, so they should just kind of go, one go on top of the other. So you're going to be checking for that as you're twisting. So you twist, and I'm checking to make sure I'm going to stop when my bridge keys are lined up, okay? If it's lined up on one side, it's most likely lined up on the other, okay? So now I have two thirds of the instrument together. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the cork down here. I'm gonna put some cork grease on it because it's gonna need it. It's a little, little cork grease. It's a little smudge, rub it in. Take it off on my fingers, don't put it on your pants. They'll leave stain. Your mom will get mad at you. Oh, I forgot to talk about where to hold it because I told you not to grab the keys, right? Well, when I did that, notice on the top joint, I'm holding where there's not a whole lot of keys, right? I'm putting it at the palm of my hand there and I'm lightly grabbing, lightly. I'm mostly holding it like right here, not really holding onto the keys. Um, the middle joint, I usually grab here because there's more space there. There aren't a whole lot of keys. Um, and again, since I'm touching most of the, the back, the black part of the oboe, um, and then you just twist, right? No death grips. Okay. And then when I put the bell on, the bell has a lot of spot, space where there is not keys. So it's a lot easier to hold. Um, I usually put it, so the thumb rest back here, I put it there uh, and kind of rest it there and then just hold for stability. Uh, this one also has a bridge key. This needs to go on top of here. If your oboe does not have this key, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, out of the bridge keys, this is the one that most likely people hit. So if you're afraid that you are going to hit this with 
the bridge key on the bottom here, what you can do is you can put your thumb on this key right here and it pops up this bridge key so there's a little more space, okay? And then you just twist, twisting, no, no, no forcing, no forcing straight on, right? Twist. Okay, so now we have all of the oboe together. Cool, right? So now let's talk about how to put the reed in. Okay, we'll talk more about reeds in a little bit. But when you hold on to the reed, you don't want to hold up here. Thread is okay, but really the cork, probably right there, is probably the best place. Again, it's cork, so we need some cork grease. We'll put a little bit on, rub it in. Used a lot there. Wipe it off, not on your pants. All right. And then I usually end up holding it about right there and twisting motion. Now I'm just gonna make sure that my reed is in line um, so that when I go to play it later, it's not sitting weird in my mouth. Um, so how I do that, I'm looking for the side of the reed to kind of match the keys that or the the bars that go this way right so they kind of match all right now the instrument is together we're going to take a second and we're going to talk about reeds because they're super duper important so i'll meet you in the reed room welcome to the reed room so we're going to talk about all things oboe reeds so i've talked a little bit about the different parts of the reed um i'm just going to hold this up behind it so you can see it um Okay, so there's the cork down here, which we use to put in the instrument, uh, which we've already done. Uh, the screen part is the thread. It's kind of like embroidery floss. If you know what that is, if not, no big deal. And then this part is the really important part. It's the cane. Um, and the cane comes from basically from bamboo. Um, so it's really brittle when it's dry. So we want to make sure that it's nice and wet when we play it okay so those are kind of the basic parts of the reed um in picking a good reed we're going to talk about the opening which is going to be the top here um what shape that looks like so the opening you want it to look like kind of a football you want it to look kind of like this you don't want it super wide and you don't want it super skinny Okay, so both if it's super wide, it's gonna or super skinny, it's gonna give you some difficulties in trying to play it. So you kind of want like a nice um, football shape, okay? And that's talking about the opening. So if you're gonna look on, at the read this way to look into it, that's we want that nice football shape, okay? Um, another thing that could be um, with just visually looking at a reed, something that you might want to look for is at the side. So if we turn it this way, so this is where the two pieces of cane meet. So a oboe reed is a slightly different than like a clarinet or um, a saxophone reed because it is a double reed. So it has two pieces of cane and they vibrate against each other. Where like a clarinet or saxophone has just one reed and you put it on a mouthpiece, right? So we have two pieces of cane. So we're going to talk about this side where these two pieces meet. Okay, you want to make sure that those two, the, the sides, both sides, this side and, and the other one that you can't see right now, you want to make sure that they are nice and tight like this. Okay, so this is the side. You want it to make sure that it's nice and tight. Now, if it opens like this, that means the air is escaping and that's not a good thing. Um, it's going to make it harder to play and it might not work very well. So if you find a read or if you get a read that's got the side is open, it's probably not going to be a good read. So you might just look for those things. If those would be the two biggest things that I would say, um, looking at the opening and a nice football shape, and then looking to see that the sides are closed. Those are the two biggest things that you can visually look at to see if it's a good read. Okay, uh, if you're buying a reed. Um, so there are different strengths of reeds. Uh, we go from soft to hard. Uh, usually a beginner is gonna start with either a soft reed or a medium soft reed, depending on what is available to you at your local music store or online. Um, 
medium soft is a little bit harder than the soft. So from the stiff to the hardest, our um, strengths are soft, medium soft, medium, medium hard, and hard. Um, probably start with the soft or the medium soft and then work your way up. Um, now you're thinking to yourself, how do I know when I need to move up a strength? Well, if you're if you're blowing into the reed and you get this like really wild, crazy kind of honky sound, that's probably a good indication that you need to move up in the strength. Um, now, if you move up and you're like, I can't get any sound out of this, then whatever you were playing, the one below that is probably where you need to stay for that period of time. But don't throw out that read, the harder one, because you'll get to a point where you'll be able to use it. Um, now, we've talked about the different strengths of reeds. The two types we're going to talk about are machine-made reeds and handmade reeds. That's, and then the description is basically how, what, how the reed is made. So with a machine-made reed, there's not as much of quality control. Um, a machine just goes through and says, oh, here you go. Um, now with a handmade reed, someone actually sat down and, and actually made the reed. So it's kind of like whittling, but a little more, very more specific. Um, so you're gonna get some issues with like the, the shape of the tip um, and then the opening of the sides. You'll probably see more issues with that in machine made reeds because there's not somebody sitting and looking at them to say, yes, this is good or no, this isn't. With a handmade reed, you won't get that as much. Um, Definitely not the sides opening, um, the, the opening at the top, the football shape, you might get a variation there. It just depends on the cane. It's very finicky um, and it likes to do what it likes to do. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got talked about the different strengths, what to look for in a reed, um, the different types of handmade versus machine-made. Now let's talk about how to keep these guys safe because it is super duper duper important to make sure that we keep them safe. If we don't, then we get really bad things to happen, okay? So when you get a read, you probably get it in some sort of something like this. Either a little tube, this one has a read in it, or this little case like this. So these three are examples of shipping vessels. I would not use these to hold my reed to like as a reed case. These are your absolute last resort. I would not use these as a long-term solution. It's, it's used in shipping. So the reeds are dry when they go in, they're dry when they come out, right? Um, you're not getting them wet and then putting them back in here. So that could pose a problem. So if I play my reed and it's nice and wet and I go and put it in here that doesn't have any holes in it, we're gonna have an issue with mold and mold is gross. My suggestion is to go with reed case. Now, this one is one that KBI has in stock. This is not my favorite, but it will work, okay? So this is part of the reason why I don't like it as my favorite. So you take the reed and you put it in there like this. Ooh, this one's nice and tight. So I would like it for this read because it's being held in by the cork right here. Um, so it's nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. Well, well, what happens if I take a different read? Well, it, this one doesn't fit very well at all. Like it's, it's, it's going to come out and it might come out like that. You see that it's coming out the end here. That's not good. Okay. Um, so we want to avoid that. So it's a, it's an okay, no, but I would say this is better than the shipping vessel, okay? My suggestion is to get some sort of a reed case like this. Um, this is just a three reed case. It's similar to the one that um, KBI or your local music shop would have in, in stock. And it's getting held in there by the little tines here. So yeah, that's nice and good, it's, it's in there. Okay, so I would suggest something like this. It's gonna hold your reeds a lot better than this. So just to keep that in mind. For a beginner, a three reed case may be 
um, nothing more than 10, I would say, um, would be good to have, okay? Now I realize that I didn't talk about what, like, when do I know to get rid of said read? Um, so if you look at this read, we're going to look at the tip, which is this part up here, okay? You notice that this is nice and straight across. That's good, right? So we don't have any random, like, chips in it or anything like that. So this is good. Now, if you look at this one, it's got a little bit of, like, chips coming out the sides. Um, this one, since there are a lot of them, I'd probably say that that's, that's time that it needs to get retired. Um, I'd say this is this is the extreme case here. This one is really terrible. This one will not work no matter what I would do to it. This one will not work. I don't know if you can tell. There's a big old crack down the middle here. Okay, if you have a crack that goes down the middle of the reed like this, that is time it needs to go, okay? It will not work anymore. Now, the tip on this one also has those jagged parts. If it just had the jagged parts, I'd be like, eh, it's probably time to get rid of it. But if it's cracked down the center like that, it's toast. It's not going to work anymore, okay? Um, now, some other things, I don't know if you could notice on this one, it's got this like little tail of thread here. That's okay. Um, that's where they tie the cane onto the cork. That, that's why that thread is there, okay? If you have a little bit of thread that's sticking off, that's not a problem. The problem will be if it starts to unravel more than just this little bit, okay? So if I have knots that are coming undone, that's bad, okay? So if that happens, if you're afraid that'll happen, take a little bit of um, clear nail polish and put over the knots down here at the base where the, the string meets the cork and they won't come untied. But this little piece here, that's fine. It's not doing anything. It's not harming anything, okay? So that's okay. So we've talked about good things to look for, reads, bad things, when should we move up and that kind of stuff. So let's talk about, well, how am I going to use my read in band class? So you notice I have this little cup of water. Uh, this is gonna be your best friend, free reads. It is always a good idea to soak your read in water as opposed to just putting it in your mouth. Um, the enzymes in your mouth break down the reeds. So when you put your reed in your water, you want to just kind of dunk it in there. You don't want to throw it in there. You don't want to force it in there. Like I said, the cane is very brittle when it's dry. Um, so you want to be super duper careful with it. So we're just going to leave it in there for a little bit. Um, like 30 seconds, minute, two minutes, something. You don't want to overwater them. Um, you'll get to a point where you'll be able to notice like, hey, I think my reed is dry. It needs a dunk. And you just dunk it in the water and it'll be fine. Um, you'll get that feeling. Uh, this is probably enough. All right. So nice and wet. So let's see if it works. <laughs> huh. It worked. All right. So with this, just be careful if you have it. If, if you don't have um, a cup like this, any sort of um, medicine bottle or any small container will work. So now we know how to make sure that our reeds work and we know how to put the instrument together. Let's put these two things together and we'll talk about our playing posture. Welcome to the lesson room. For this part of the video, I'm just going to show you like general posture. I'm not going to tell you where to put your fingers. Your band director or um, private instructor is going to do that for you. Okay, so we're just going over basic posture. So if you're sitting in a chair, as I am currently, you want to have your feet flat on the floor um, and then you want your to sit up nice and tall, right? No slouchy. This is bad. Okay. Nice and tall. Bring your shoulders back. Um, don't put them in your ears. Pull them back. Okay. Um, so your left hand is going to go on the top joint. 
your right hand is going to go on the middle joint, um, your right thumb underneath the thumb rest. Um, your instructor will tell you where your fingers go, okay? So generally, um, when you're sitting, you want to bring the oboe to you. You do not want to go to the oboe because you'll end up some weird posture, sitting position, not good, okay? So bring it to you. Um, with the oboe, I'll turn this way so you can see, it should be about a 45 degree angle from the instrument to your, your torso. It's about 45 degrees. You don't want to stick the bell between your knees and you don't want it to go flying away. So kind of in the middle, right? Okay, let's turn back around and we'll talk about your arms. So your arms are gonna be like in a 90 degree, uh, your elbows are in 90 degrees, okay? Um, you don't want to pull your elbows really close into your body and you don't want to fly away. These are both bad things. Uh, I just feel the tension <laughs> in this and it, it's going to end up hurting. Also, don't do not do this. This looks really uncomfortable. It feels a little uncomfortable. This is not good. Okay. So if you have tension anywhere, you're probably doing something wrong. Think about how to fix that. Um, you know, straight back, feet flat on the floor. 45 degree angle of the instrument to your body, um, your elbows not flying away. And if you have a music stand, as I have one here, you want to make sure that you set it in front of you so that you're not like doing some weird contortion things so that trying to see the music. So it's going to sit, I'm going to put it a little bit off to the side and I'm going to face the music stand like this and I'm going to be able to play. Now that we've gone over the proper posture, you should go practice. All right, now that we're done playing, we need to make sure we clean out our instrument. Remember earlier when we said that water was a no-no? So when you're playing, you're gonna end up getting um, condensation or some sort of moisture inside your instrument, and we need to make sure that that doesn't stay there, okay? It, bad things can happen if it stays there. Um, mold might be one of them, all right? So we need to swab out our instrument. We have different types of swabs, and I'll show you a couple different ones. Uh, if you are getting the care kit from KBI, uh, it comes with two separate swabs, um, one for the top joint and one for the middle joint and the bell, okay? So the all swabs are made fundamentally the same. Um, they have some sort of weight on one end and some sort of way to clean it on the other, okay? So you're gonna have to make sure that there are no knots at all in this before you start. Okay, so doing this is a great way to say, oh, there's no knots. Actually, there's a knot in this one. <laughs> um, there's a knot right here. So I'm going to stop. And before I put it in my elbow, I'm going to take that out. Because if I don't take the knot out, there is a high possibility that it's going to get stuck in the elbow, which is bad. So since this one is just for the top joint, I'm going to take the instrument apart in the middle Put that down for a second. Um, the way that the swabs work, you're always going to take the weight of the swab. You're going to put it in the bigger end of the instrument so that it falls towards the smaller end. Okay, so in the bigger end through to the smaller end and pull. There might be a little bit of resistance just because there's a lot of material going through here. Um, a little resistance is okay. If it resists a lot, you need to stop pulling this way and see if you can pull it back out, okay? So we're gonna put this back together. I'm gonna show you a different type of swab. So there is this one that's got, the side has a weight on it and a string, and then we've got our swab, uh, the, the material that swabs it out, and then another string, okay? So um, this one's kind of old, it's got holes in it. <laughs> Um, it's been well loved. Um, this is a very common type of swab. Um, again, check for knots. There's a big old knot right there. We're going to take the time and take that out. Um, this one is going to go through the entire instrument. So I'm going to keep it all together, right? The weight goes in first in the bigger end, okay? All the way through. And then you're gonna pull it out 
the top end. Okay. Now let's say that this felt like it was getting stuck. You, once you feel that resistance of, I don't think it's going to come anymore, you stop pulling this. Stop. Whatever you're doing, do not pull it further this way. From personal experience, it does not work. <laughs> um, with this one, because I went through the entire instrument, I'm going to then say, okay, well, can I see the other end of it? Nope, sure can't. So I'm going to take the instrument apart right here in the middle to see if I can find the other part of the swab. Oh, hey, look, it's right there. Okay. Um, now, I can see this, and I'm going to pull it back out this way. And I'm going to say it's done. Okay. Now, if it got stuck, I told you to stop pulling this way. Yeah. If you continue to pull this way, bad things will happen. From personal experience, I did that. It felt tight when I was beginning, right? I was pulling it out and it got stuck. I continued to pull. Bad choices. I had a swab that was similar to this that had the tail on it. And the tail had gotten wrapped up on the inside here. So I had nothing to pull from. Okay. I had to take it to the repair shop in order to get them to get the swab out. So if that happens to you, you take the oboe to your repair person and say, I got my swab stuck. Can you please get it out? Okay. Do not try to get it out yourself. Don't continue pulling out the top and do not do anything to try and get it out. Okay. Stop. Take it to the repair person. They know the proper tools to use. Okay. Now, if it does get stuck, you'll probably end up with holes in your swab. So you might have to get a new one, but that's not a bad thing. All right, instrument is swabbed, nice and clean on the inside, nice and dry. So now that we've got it all nice and dry, it's time to put it away. Okay, so now that our instrument is nice and clean, we're gonna talk about how to keep it safe and make sure it's back in our case. So if you, were, if you don't remember how the instrument goes in the case. There's a picture right here, or you can always look at the case. So I'm going to lay this out for a second, and I'm going to open the case. Move this thing over the way, right? So the case itself, there's each part of the instrument has one specific spot that it fits, and it only fits that way, okay? So if you try and put um, the wrong joint in the wrong place, it's not going to work, okay? So we're going to take our instrument apart. So I'm going to put the case back down. Um, it does not matter which order you take it apart, whatever order it makes sense to you. I'm going to start with the top joint, okay? Um, so with our top and our middle joints, remember we had our little tenon corks or cover things. Um, so if you have those and they're in your case, they need to go back on the instrument, okay? And then you place it inside. See how nice and pretty. Um, if you don't want to use the tenon covers, you need to take them out of your case. Okay. So if it's not serving a purpose in the case, it needs to go. Right. Uh, so then take the other two part pieces apart. It's nice and snug. Tenon cork cover on there. And then it goes back in. Hey, look, it's all nice and pretty. Okay. So we've got this in here. Now, this obviously goes in on top of it. Uh, when you put this on, make sure that it doesn't cover any of the spices here because when you go and close it, it might get in the way. Um, this is the only thing that is allowed to be sitting on top of your instrument in your case. Okay. The only thing. Nothing else goes on top of your instrument. Okay, the only space in here that has it's a spot for anything else is right here. Okay, this is a great place to put your reeds. So if you have it in your um, shipping vessel, it fits right in there. Or if you get the little three reed case, um, that also fits in here. It might fit a little snug to start with, but the whole case is a little snug to start with. Um, so it'll get used to it. Uh, so that is it all in the case. Now let's talk about safety when it's not in the case. Okay. So 
I'm gonna put this down. I have another one here. So if I'm sitting in band class and I'm not playing my instrument, I can put it in my lap. I, I can, so right now it's sitting on my knee and I'm pretty much just done this with it. Totally fine, okay? Um, I still have a hand on it though, okay? Don't try and just like rest it. This, this is probably not a great idea because it will move, okay? Make sure you have one hand on it at all times unless it is in a safe position. Now, what do I mean by that, okay? Um, a safe position would be if I were to lay it in my lap like this, okay? Notice the keys are face up, okay? And you just lay it in your lap like that, totally fine. If you have an oboe stand, you may put your oboe on the stand, okay? Now, that being said, if you do not have an oboe stand, do not ever do this. See, it's balanced. No, no, do not ever do that, okay? It will fall over. Then you will have to take it to the repairman because it broke. Don't do it, okay? Um, now, if you're walking away, like you have to go to the bathroom in band class, what you can do, since this is a little big, just fit on the chair, you can take it apart in the middle and put these two pieces in the chair like this, okay? Just set them down, keys face up, it'll be fine, okay? Um, also, reeds. Now, we've talked about that you need a reed case in order to keep your reeds safe, right? So if you are not playing in band, like say you went to the bathroom and you pulled it apart and sat it down, Okay, your reed needs to come out. I would not leave your reed in the oboe and walk away from it. That's just asking for a disaster. Okay, um, so you can take your reed out, put it back in the case. Um, you can sit with it in your mouth or put it on your stand, whatever. Just make sure that it's in a safe place. Okay, uh, all right. Well, now that you know how to keep your instrument safe, let's talk about some awesome accessories. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some accessories. I'll just say this to start with. These are things that KBI has in stock. So if you need them, you can come here and get them, but there are lots of different options. These are not the only ones, okay? So our first accessory we're gonna talk about is a necessity. We talked about the importance of your swab. Um, you can get them in all sorts of different colors. This one's purple because it's the best. So get your favorite color, cool. Next. Also a necessity, some cork grease. This little tube of cork grease will last you for a long time, okay? Make sure you have one. All right, so if you were playing and you're like, man, my thumb hurts, what you could do is you can get a thumb cushion. It comes in a box like this. Um, so this is what the cushion actually looks like. Um, it's nice and squishy, right? This particular one, you end up putting on there, right? Super nice. Oh, so much better. Um, now, if you don't, you, there are lots of different types of thumb cushions. Um, you could use a pencil grip. If you're in a pinch, just cut a little bit of it off and there you go. Um, also, from personal experience, if you're having pain anywhere when you're playing your instrument, you're probably doing something wrong or something's not quite right. So um, pain is not good. All right. So we also talked about the importance of a reed case, right? So now if you're thinking to yourself, wait, probably need a reed case. She told me I needed a swab and some cork grease. And hey, that thumb cushion looks nice. You're thinking, hey, can I get all of those things at once? Yeah, sure can. Um, so this is the care kit that KBI has. Um, your local music store probably had something similar. Um, but it has all of those things inside and they're super awesome, okay? So if you want to get all of those things, it comes in a care kit. Super nice. Okay, our next accessory is a soaker cup. So we've talked about the importance of this when we talked more about reins, right? This one's really cool because it comes with the cup and the lid, 
and this little metal thing here um, and it clips on to the music stand like here and then you can put your cup inside um, so that's really cool so that way it's not sitting on the floor and somebody walks by and they knock it over and then you have to go with paper towels and it's a headache so super nice we have polishing cloth so if you are one of those people that like love to make sure that everything looks nice and pretty and you don't like fingerprint on anything get yourself a polishing cloth so you would just polish the keys you don't need to polish the plastic or wood just polish the keys polishing cloth super cool okay last thing that we're going to talk about is an oboe stand this particular one comes in a box like this um, I'll show you how to put it together. So it comes like this in the box, right? But this is screwed in. Um, to make this a little easier, I'm not screwed in. So it comes like this in your box. And you would take it out, make sure it's screwed on tight. Um, there are different types of oboe stands. This is one of them. They put together differently. Uh, and one thing that's super duper important, make sure that wherever you put this down is on a flat surface. Because if you put it down on something like this, and then I put the oboe on here, it's going to fall over. So don't do that. Okay? Make sure it's flat. And then you can put the oboe on top. And then you can say, hey, look at my nice, beautiful oboe. And you should be jealous because the oboe's nice. Thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at kbimusicshop.com or call us at 540-891-7800. Our staff would love to help you out. Also, check out our website. It's www.kbimusicshop.com for a PDF of this video's information and for all your musical needs. Let us help you play your song.